today I wanted to discuss with you what to do with all that art coming in. Now, if you've got kids, uh, generally grade school to you know preschool age-ish, uh, it's probably coming in hot and a lot. And sometimes, you know, these things just wind up right in the garbage. Other times you wind up getting piles and piles and piles of collected artwork. And there needs to be some kind of compromise, right? Well, I can't say what's necessarily right for you, but what I can do is share with you what I do and take from it what you will and give you some ideas that maybe you haven't thought of to kind of sort of figure out how to navigate that area of what to save and what to get rid of. Because the reality is uh, you can be getting up to three or four pieces of artwork from your children a day and uh, over the course of a school year that will add up to a lot. So the first thing you might notice is that we're not in the studio, we're in my home. I thought that this would be a little bit more appropriate setting to sort of um, kind of give you this system a little bit. We're going to take a, a brief tour to a few other places. Okay, so the first thing I want to discuss with you is what is worth saving versus what do you get rid of? And there's no clear cut answer. Uh, and also the method of which you do get rid of things is very crucial, okay? I want to put this out there and, and mind you, I realize that I'm hypersensitive to this because of my family business and my personal beliefs of the importance of the arts. The last thing I want to do is upset my child by making them feel like their artwork doesn't matter, okay? That's very important to me. My fondest childhood memory, and this might sound sad, uh, but I, I don't see it that way. One of my favorite things when I think back to growing up is the montage of artwork my father would keep of mine from, you know, this age range I'm talking about, whether, you know, two to 10 or 11, and it would just be up on his office wall. I mean, he had all these professionally picture framed things and, and just my art. And that to this day, you know, decades later, really resonates with me. It makes me feel good inside when I think back to that. And I don't want to take that away from my children either. So let's look at some things. First thing is what I would say might not be worth saving. Okay, so here we go. Things with googly eyes. Um, this is this is cute, you know. Uh, and and look again. This is just m my thinking. You might have a completely different uh, idea. I mean, I'm not trying to sit here and say it's wrong to keep this or wrong to throw it away. I'm not judging any of you, and I hope you're not judging me. Uh, but you know, please feel free to share what you do at home. Uh, this to me is something that I wouldn't necessarily keep because it's highly not archival. I mean, the nature of tissue paper on its own, the googly eyes, if I, I, I couldn't put it in a port. I mean, there's really no way to frame it. it it's, not, it's not functional, but it does look cute temporarily on the wall if you'd like. Another thing, and you'll get, and please parents out there, back me up in the comments below if you've ever gotten this. Your kid will come home with artwork that has been crumpled, folded, and then put on top of their wet clothing. And and for whatever reason, this is the thing that means so much to them. Um, uh, this, this, um, we're filming this on uh, July 25th, so sorry if you're watching this in November, it's always possible. Uh, so this is a thing that happened this month, and my daughter was very proud of it, and uh, when I saw it, and it was soaking wet at the time, I'm like, well, I hope I can open it, so I waited for it to dry, and then fortunately it didn't stick together, so I still have this right now. And then, she's, uh, you know, like just, it's cute, but like, I don't know, the, one of the googly eyes has already fallen off this cotton ball paper plate sheep, eh, you know? And then finally, my personal favorite, uh, this just came home yesterday. And uh, yeah, I don't know what to do with that. I mean, I shouldn't say that. We've actually, I actually have framed a sock. Um, my, my, my wife's great, grandmother made socks and it was very important so my gra the, her grandparents asked that we frame anyway uh it's anything's possible you know anything's possible nothing if, if it's important to you um nothing can't be salvaged or saved or cannot be preserved the best you can it just depends on how much you want to spend and how much it, it means to you i mean that's just the reality and we'll get into a little bit more of that later but but for me uh, this is, uh, oh, okay. So, with all that said, 
how am I going to dispose of this evidence, right? Okay, because I told you I don't want my kids to see me throwing it away. I don't. Now, obviously, the easy solution is to say, well, wait for them to be asleep, wait for them to be at school, and then you put it in the garbage, and then you tie it up, and you bring it outside, you put it in the bin, and they're too small to look in. Well, here's the reality. You never know what your kids will remember that they made. And I will say that's got a fairly short lifespan. So this is the system that I've developed. Now I've saved this stuff because I planned on doing this filming anyway, <clears throat> but generally I give it 24 hours. So what does that mean? My kids come home from school, you know, let's say it's, you know, they're, they're, they're back, it's five o'clock, right? And I'm opening up their book bags and taking out all their stuff and there's artwork in there. I will take that artwork out and the first thing I do is I look at it in front of them and I look for things that I can give labeled praises on. Okay, that's, that's a term my wife taught me. And labeled praises are basically not just saying, oh, that's beautiful. It's sort of like, you know, regardless of what it is, I would say like, I love how you got the colors of a baby chick just perfect. You know, these are things that mean a lot more than just like, oh, that's cute. You know, I, I think that the label praises um, really do make a difference. So I always try to encourage and compliment them on their art. And then what I simply do is set it aside, okay? I set it aside in a place where they can sort of see it, like, but not in, in the way. Like it's up on a counter, okay? And then I let a day pass. If at some point during that day, whether it's first thing in the morning, or um, you know, sometimes it, you know, it's a Friday and it's over the weekend and so they're home on Saturday. If, if they mention the artwork at all, I know that throwing it away is off limits, okay? I think it's a given that I don't throw it away in front of them, okay? And, and, and in the future, L, Jerry, if you're watching this, yes, I, I am telling you about the dark secret of daddy throwing away some of your artwork, and that's terrible. I, I feel terrible, but the reality is there's only so much space depending on where you live and, and, and you know, many factors, but that's just the case. We can't keep everything. So, it's no different than with your toys. If a, if, a, if a stuffy comes in, a stuffy goes out. There's only so much room. But back to the subject at hand, if they bring it up, I save it because that means that it means something to them for some reason. Especially, uh, and I'll tell you that I have made this mistake before, I have thrown away something and then I found out that my daughter made it for a friend's birthday, like for her, a card for her, and I felt terrible. So some of this stuff I learned the hard way. And yeah, so generally within a day, if they've forgotten about it, they've forgotten about it. Caveats to that, if they come home and say, Daddy, this is for you, or Mommy, this is for you, I almost, I don't even care what it, I, it could be this sock, I, I, I will keep it. There's something about the fact that they made something specifically for me that means something to me. That I think that that's, you know, reasonable. Okay, so we got all this artwork coming in. What do you say? Well, you know, obviously that's up to you and how you want to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of show you a little bit of a system that I've created. Now, number one thing I save is, like I said, when they say it's for me, especially like even something that you wouldn't think is, you know, art, a uh, birthday card, um, you know, it's a, it's a Trader Joe's birthday card. And my daughter, you know, they just, they just doodled in it and Jerry made a few, you know, it, it just means something to me, okay? Now, will I frame this? No, but will I stick it somewhere where I can go back and look at it over the years? Absolutely, and I will keep cards and things for daddy in one area, okay? Now, I would like to show my kids, like, hey, this is, this is growth. This is where, because those labeled praises we talked about, this is you know, where we started, this is where you've been, this is where we're going, that kind of thing. So here's a taste, okay? So just bear with me. This is called an eternity box. We sell these, they're great. They are designed to store things archivally, okay? Um, but I basically use these as a one-year time capsule, okay? I don't default to throwing away things. There are things in here that might land in the garbage, okay? That's just reality. But if it's not something that has one of these factors, I usually hold on to it because I don't know how I'll feel about it later on or if I notice some consistencies in what they're doing or changes. 
after that year is up, then I will have the opportunity to decide what to keep and whatnot. Okay, I know I'm being long-winded, I'm sorry. Uh, so let me just open this up. Now, this is a combination of both Jerry and L's over the past year. They do come with these little do not eat things. I recommend you hold on to them. Keeping moisture away from this stuff is not a bad thing. All right, and like I said, not all of it's fine art. Like I mentioned, it's July right now, so Jerry came home and he had made this and I stuck it in here. And then I've got this other thing where it's stickers, but I don't know, it means something to me because my daughter took the time to practice writing my name out. That, that I didn't ask her to do that. She wanted to learn how to write my name. And I think it might have been for like a card or something, but who knows, anyway. So I have this huge stack of things in here. And what I'm gonna do is, <clears throat> now that it's the summer, I will go through it, okay, organize it, and then I will start to either throw, throw some of them out, and I will definitely separate one for my son, one for my daughter. They each will have their, their own separate pile. And then, now that you've seen all this, I will show you what I do with it. If I've decided to keep it, I will put it in a portfolio, okay? There are tons of portfolios out there that don't have to be very expensive. So this is one that I've already done from when my daughter first started preschool. She was in the superstar class. Uh, fortunately, that was uh, an abridged school year because of, uh, well, you may see that, yeah. So with that being said, I take the art and I put it in here. Now this is crucial to me and sometimes the teachers will do this. I will generally put this on the back but I always date and label them, okay? So I know when it was made, who it was made by, uh, just in case I lose track, and the date also helps me keep it chronologically ordered for progress, okay? Now, some of you guys are like, oh, he's crazy with all this. Well, again, I, I am an outlier. I am biased. I do want to, I hope that when my kids are in middle school, even if it's not in school, they are creating more artwork than I can handle. I, I want to encourage that because I believe in it. I mean, again, I know that sounds very self-serving, but I, look, I was born and raised that way and that's what I'm doing with my kids. I, I don't know any better. That's what I know, art's important. This piece actually, I say this piece, was in another artist problem video where I said I, I re recently bought a piece. Do you remember that video? And then we, and then we showed that it was actually, it was to show confidence in the, in the brush strokes. And I still to this day believe that. So she would have been two years and, and two months and I said to her, I love your brush strokes. Uh, I, and I meant that, you know, these, these labeled praises, okay? So this is going to be my little keepsake for that school year. This is what I do, okay? Now, there are a few other things that will, because you'll be like, well, great, but are you looking at the artwork? Well, I mean, for me, I will flip through this. I mean, that's just my thing. And, you know, it's not just for the sake of keeping things to keep them, but there are other pieces of artwork that I don't have control over. Wait, what? Yeah. I don't have control over it. There are some pieces of artwork that my daughter did not make for me. She did not make for my wife, she did not make for her brother, she did not make for her friends, she made them for her. And she proclaims, look at what I made, I wanna hang it in my room. Now personally, I don't have a problem with this, okay? However, this became a point of contention between my wife and I, because Natasha felt that there was overwhelming amounts of art being taped up to her walls, which is fair to some degree, but I said that we needed to have a little bit of balance because my wife was like, I'm gonna go in there and take all those pictures down. And I'm like, please do not do that. Please do not do that. Whether she's here or not, that's gonna be very jarring. We wanna keep encouraging her and praising her for the, the effort that she's putting in and she has done more effort. So I'm gonna show you a few things that might help. Now I have a kind of a hybrid thing that I did because um, I don't know, like I said, going back to that story about my dad, seeing the artwork up on the wall made, you know, made me feel special. So I don't wanna take artwork down necessarily, but we do need to kind of limit it. So we made an arrangement. You can have this section and I'll take you upstairs to see my daughter's room. But in addition to that, I got her one of these um, frames that we sell. This is the um, first impressions, uh, I think it's called the Easy Lift frame. And let me just kind of show you what that means. So these frames, Ming's familiar with them, he might have one. Um, are on a hinge 
And especially when they're making a lot of different things, the great thing about this is you can stack several pieces. So like if she wants to flip, flip them out or rotate them out, she can. Um, and it just keeps them nice and displayed and it also keeps them all in one place, okay? Now, with that being said, I will say that for me, and if this, is, if this is important to you, you know, this might be a very random question to ask your kids' preschool or even your elementary school. Generally speaking, when they're doing drawings, they've got a big stack of paper, whether it's construction paper or drawing paper that the, the teachers are pulling from. Ask before the school year, hey, what size paper is it gonna be? Now, this particular frame comes in nine by 12, and that seems to be, from my friends and family limited experience, uh, pretty standard. Now, it might be completely different uh, where you are, and that's why I ask, like, hey, what's, what's that size? Now, I'll usually size up on these eternity boxes to make sure that they can accommodate something a little larger, um, especially if my kid comes home with something like, I don't know, one time Elle came home with like a big piece of cardboard that was made into a pizza. She's like, I made you a pizza, Daddy. And I'm like, okay, well, that is a little bit too big to fit in this box, but if I, but you know what I mean? Like there's certain pieces that you want to, you want to have a little bit larger. But the nine by 12 seems to be a pretty reasonable size and you can always go down a little. So if she comes home with something slightly smaller, um, I can mount that with, uh, with, with some uh, artist tape to the back of a larger piece of paper and put it in there, similar to what actually this watercolor that she did uh, is, is mounted on. So let's go up to my daughter's room and let me kind of show you what I was talking about with that wall. Okay, so welcome to my daughter's little art corner in her room, all right? Uh, this is what my wife and I have compromised in terms of how much art uh, she can display. Now, you'll notice this blue tape, this is painter's tape. It's not gonna damage your wallpaper, um, but it's strong enough to hold up, you know, pieces of artwork on paper, and uh, it works well for us. Now, we also have in this corner, because this is where she wanted it, first impressions frame that can be lifted up. Now, the rule is, that she can put up whatever she wants here, but if she wants to put something else up, something else has to come down. So basically it's teaching her, well, okay, what, what means, it will help narrow it down like a, like a bracket, <laughs> you know, what pieces of art mean the most to me. And if for some reason she starts throwing a fit, like, like no, 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 I don't want to get rid of any of these, and they're that much important that I'll say, then they're going to go in daddy's storage box. So we, we will have it, and I will keep that. And I will, I, I will keep it if it means that much to her. But a lot of these things, like you can see these pieces over here, these are basically watercolor coloring books. So she painted these, but obviously, you know, these are pre-done line drawings where, it, and she likes them enough to display them. This is just stickers, but it's her wall to do with what, as she pleases. But these are obviously drawings that she's done, um, things she's proud of and she should be. So I said to her, this always has to close because she might just, try to keep stuffing them in there, which is fine, but it has to close. Uh, and if it's reached that point, and we haven't gotten there, really. I mean, she's been pretty good. Um, right now, uh, my daughter's uh, five years and two months. So um, she, she, she gets it, she follows the rules, and she has, we have an understanding with her that, you know, I think that she agrees with and it's not upsetting her you know every every kid of course is also different I mean there's a lot of factors here so this is just sort of a glimpse a little glimpse into my life we're not going through all the areas I have my kids artwork up on and I'm just trying to give you you know little little pieces that I think might be helpful so that's her art corner and if she decides that she has another piece she wants to hang on the wall we say okay which of these do you want to take down maybe there's room for it in here maybe there's not is it important if they you know if she makes a big deal about it I will save it separately. But generally, because you know we're giving her the choice, I think she feels empowered to say, I'm done with this one, Daddy. I want to put this up there. And that also goes into the confidence I'm trying to grow in her and her artwork. All right, now I told you that there was one other way to display artwork, and this way is not for everybody, okay? Nor is it for the vast majority of the artwork that comes home. But, I do want to show you one particular thing I recently did. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, so let me start with a little bit of backstory on this. When my daughter came home, she presented me with a square piece of paper with a footprint on it and this little blurb, and she had signed her name. And I was extremely touched. It was a Father's Day piece of art. I was confused 
honest to goodness, why there was such a large blank area on the other side. It just did not, I don't know, it's like, well, I'm going to display this, but that's kind of weird. And my wife was the one that was actually saying, like, it's so you put your footprint next to hers. Now, I think a normal person, <laughs> when, they got, when they got this, would have understood that. And my wife's a normal person, and I'm not. I am one that, as much as I like doing art, as soon as paint touches my skin, I stop what I'm doing and wash it off. And again, if you followed my videos, you know that I do not like having paint on me. I have a very poor relationship with pastels. We don't get along. We don't see eye to eye. Um, but when it comes to paint, generally I can control if it's on me or not. So I did this because it's for my daughter. There's only two times I've done this. One was for this and the other was for if you watched our Father's Day video that's uh, well, go back to the videos we posted in June. Um, I also put my hand in the paint. Uh, little side note, I think that if you watch me put my hand down in the paint, you see my daughter kind of going like this in the video, like, no, 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 uh, when, when I have my hand up. At first, I was like, oh, she doesn't want me to touch her, but then I'm realizing, no, she knows that I don't like paint on me, and she's like, no, you don't have to do that, Daddy. Like, anyway. So, with that all being said, I, I did it. Got my footprint on. Now, I know that I used Lucas acrylics for that, an artist quality paint. However, whenever a piece of artwork comes home from school, even if they're in high school, maybe even sometimes in college, you have to assume that they are using the cheapest stuff available, the least archival stuff available, okay? Especially younger kids. I mean, this is probably tempera, all right? Um, so if you get something that really hits home, really, really matters to you, it needs to get put behind glass, okay? And if possible, away from light, so this hallway doesn't have any windows when the doors are closed, and even if all the doors are open, there's no direct sunlight hitting it. And I also went all the way to put museum glass over this. It's not fine art, it's not, but it meant the world to me. Now, in time, there might be things that she brings home that mean the same, and I will do the same. But obviously this is something that's saved for very special things. I'm not sitting here saying that uh, the majority of my kids' artwork is, is framed and matted and put behind museum glass. But when something hits you in the heart, as hard as this one did for me, I needed to save it, man. I, I just needed to save it because the thought of losing this hurt, you know? And of course, I still take pictures of these things. I uh, just in case something was to, God forbid, happen. But um, as you can see, this is in our hallway and I have to look at my footprint, but it's, it's kind of the story that if you read the blurb, um, makes sense. So if you find something that means a lot to you, get it framed. Um, it's just that simple. It will almost guarantee it will last uh, exponentially longer. Guys, if any of these products were of interest to you, I'm going to put links in the description down below. Uh, they're going to be on a special discount this weekend only. So from the time you see this video uh, go up until 11.59 p.m., uh, I believe your local time, Sunday night, there'll be a special price for them uh, in the links down below. So please be sure to click those and check them out. If you're interested, this is, these are usually very special deals that I do for very short windows. And uh, I hope this was helpful. Again, what works for me might not work for you. I'm just sharing sort of a little bit of what I've done. And of course, you know, you might feel like uh, that's a lot of extremes and that's fine. But if you clicked on this video, I hope at the very least it might have helped you with figuring out what's worth saving and what's worth not for you. And also, I, I'm going to just drive home this point again. Please never throw away your kids' art in front of them. I, I highly encourage you to give them labeled praises on the pieces that they've done. There's always something that you can praise. Even, even if it's just, like I said, the brush strokes are so good. You know, you really put effort in. I love the color that you chose. I like the detail that you did. So uh, share what you do down below in the comments. Please let me know uh, what do you save? Do you save anything? Do you save everything? Um, what did I, what am I doing differently than you? It's, it's important because people that are clicking on this video with this title have questions and uh, that's what it's here for, community page. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you back in the studio next time.